Shields up, Iron Breakers. Rurikun here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Monster Hunter. And today I'm going to be talking about the Monster Hunter Stories 2 demo that I've played for about eight hours yesterday. And I know that some of you guys are going to hear that and you're going to go like, yeah, but you're a content creator. You guys tend to play demos longer than most people. You guys probably played the Monster Hunter Rise demo for over 100 hours, right? And I'm not going to say that I did that. I'm also not going to say I didn't do that, but, you know, in my opinion, I actually think that there is about eight hours worth of content in the Monster Hunter Stories 2 demo. And this is without even getting into, like, min-maxing the genes that you can get from the different monsties in the demo, because I didn't really feel like engaging with that particular system. What I wanted to do is, like, I want to get uh, the best gun lance that is available in this demo, which was the Tetsukabra gun lance that you can buy from this mailings cat using a special currency called the bottle caps. And uh, in order to do that, you had to go into a, a bunch of different dungeons and go through those. So I did that to get the, the gun lance. And then after that, I saw, oh, the, I like this bull drum armor over here because it's got a cool uh, effect, which increases the amount of synergy gauge that you get from head to head attacks and whatnot. And then I went and I went to farm um, bull drums in order to get the, the pieces to get that armor. And I was actually very unlucky in my uh, bull drome materials because I kept not getting the stuff that I wanted to get the armor crafted. But, you know, I was able to craft that armor. And then I was like, okay, I also want to have my sub weapons uh, a little bit beefed up. So I want to have a good sword and shield and I want to have a good hammer. And some of you guys might be wondering, why would you need a gun, lance, a sword and shield and a hammer? And I'm going to be explaining that further ahead when we talk specifically about the gameplay, but suffice to say, I had an absolute blast yesterday playing the Moss Under Stories 2 demo, and I cannot wait for the full game release. But as per usual with my opinion videos, we're going to be starting things off by talking about visuals, animation, then we're going to go through sound, soundtrack, a little bit of the story, and obviously gameplay to give you guys all the details on the gameplay for those of you that do not know what Monster Hunter Stories gameplay is all about. I'm going to be breaking it down to you from all the things that I learned in the demo. But starting things off, like I said, we're going to go through visuals, and I think that visually the game is beautiful. The animations are friggin' fantastic. Like, you can tell that there is a lot of passion in this game through the animations. This is always something that I bring up when I'm talking about Monster Hunter games because I love the animation team that they have. They do really, really fantastic animations. And you can really tell that, like, with this beautiful art style that they have here, which I know this art style is not going to be for everyone. Personally, I friggin' love it. I can't get enough of this art style. I think. It is friggin' gorgeous, and I really love the vibrant colors that you can get uh, out of this particular art style. So, visually, animation-wise, the game is fantastic. There is one downside, though, because the demo is only available on the Switch. And naturally, when you have uh, visuals that look that good, an animation that is that detailed with all of that stuff running on the Switch. I only ran it um, docked. I did not play the game undocked at all so far. And there is a performance problem there, for sure. I don't know if they're going to fix this uh, for the final version of the game. I hope that they do something about it. But it is not going to be a big deterrent for me personally. I'm still going to be playing it on the Switch because the convenience of being able to play this game on the go, to me, is much more valuable than the whatever performance gain you can get by playing it on the PC. For some people, it's going to be different. If you prefer having all of your games run at 60 FPS, the PC is definitely going to be the platform that you're going to want to play in because right now on the switch the situation that we have is we have an uncapped frame rate which means that in certain situations where there's not a whole lot going on there's not like big distances to render or anything like that so inside of dungeons you actually can get to like 60 fps or at least high 50s but in situations where there is a lot of stuff um, in, in, on the screen at one given time, or maybe you're uh, in the open world and there's just like a big area that it's rendering through, you will see the frames dip significantly. There's even uh, certain situations, particularly in the final uh, dungeon, so to speak, that you do before the, the final fight of the demo, there's a lot of like grass and foliage in the ground. And that stuff, you can tell, that is really pushing the Switch to its limits because that is where we saw some of the bigger uh, frame dips. And therein lies the problem, is that the fact that the, the frame rate's uncapped, 
uh, and therefore it can oscillate anywhere I think between 15 frames per second to 60 frames per second and I already know that there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna have a problem with that I will say however it doesn't really affect your gameplay too much because this is not a twitch reaction based game right it's not action combat this is a turn based game so it's not a huge problem but you know it is I can recognize that it is a problem it is definitely gonna be a problem for a lot of people that are used to playing games on the PC so I just recommend you know just get it on the pc if this is going to be a problem for you like i said for me the portability of it is still a huge advantage particularly being uh the father of two children it's just the convenience of the switch is a big uh thing for me so i would rather play it on the switch it's not really that big of a deal but i would do hope that instead of having an uncapped frame rate they just try to optimize things and go for 30 fps instead of you know leaving the frame rate wild in the wind I'd rather like, if you're not going to be able to reach 60, then either give us the option to cap it at 30 so that you can optimize around that, or I don't know, do something. I hope that they do something for the final game, because otherwise there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be mad about it. But, you know, it is what it is. I do think that visually the game is gorgeous. There is that performance problem, but that's all I really have to say. Now, when it comes to the sounds, the sounds are actually friggin' awesome. The voice acting, even the English voice acting, I thought was pretty good uh, from what I've heard so far in the demo anyway. Uh, and the sounds themselves, I am a little bit impressed impressed because you guys know I play the, the Gunlance and I love explosions and all of that stuff and the explosion sounds of the Gunlance are friggin' gorgeous. I love just big explosions, uh, the, the sound of the friggin' worm steak, the, the sound of the wyvern fire, wyvern fire, the sound and animation of that is just so friggin' good. Soundtrack is also good, but I do have a minor complaint there, which is I wish we had music when we're out and about in the world uh, exploring. It's not really something that you tend to see in a lot of Monster Hunters. Usually you get the music when you're fighting the monsters or whatever. Uh, or maybe when you're uh, in a village or something, you can get a music. But this one, while I'm out in the open, uh, running through the that big open area that they give you in the demo, I wish that there was something there just to, you know, to kind of have something in the background. Otherwise, it's a little bit too silent. And all you, you really hear is like the wind and a couple of monster sounds in the background. So I, I would very much like to see a uh, soundtrack there. But I can understand if there isn't because it's just kind of something that's a Monster Hunter style thing. But, you know, it is what it is. In terms of story so far, it's been uh, very interesting. But, you know, they don't really dive too deep into the story. You do get like... Uh, you get a special kinship stone uh, closer to the end, and there's a couple of things there that they talk about. I'm going to let you guys just experience the story through the demo if that is something that you want to do. Keep in mind that if you play the demo, you can import all of your progress into the final game, so it's not like going to be wasting your time. It's not like those eight hours that I've played are going to go away. Like I'm going to be able to import that into the final game so that I, I don't have to play through those eight hours again. I'm just going to be able to continue where I left off, which is pretty damn good. But um, yeah, in terms of story, I thought it was interesting. It's, uh, it has captivated me. It has gotten my attention. There's definitely something going on about uh, a conflict between the hunters and the riders. And that is turning out to be a very interesting like storyline that I'm curious to engage with and see where it goes. Because it is painting the hunters kind of like as the bad guys. Which, if you think about it, it's kind of like an interesting uh, narrative to portray because you know there is that thing where sometimes players look at the the way that we're killing monsters and monster hunter right and we're like we're actually the bad guys here and it almost seems like this game is exploring that side of things so that'll be interesting as well as some of the more secretive sides of the guild and whatnot i'm super curious to see all of that stuff in the final game but like i said in the in the demo it's mostly tutorial stuff so they don't go too deep into lore things like, get a couple of nuggets here and there, but it's whatever. But let's talk about the most important thing, and that is the gameplay. And I friggin' loved the gameplay. So for those of you who don't know what the gameplay is, the gameplay is like, the combat is turn-based. I'm going to go into greater detail in terms of the combat, but your whole experience in the gameplay is you want to go and collect eggs of monsters so that you can hatch those eggs and then they become like your monsties that you can take with you into battle. So, you know, the same way that's in a Pokemon game, you throw your Pokeball, you capture things, right? 
in um, Monster Hunter Stories, you go out into these caverns, which are the, the dens of the monsters, and you go and you steal their eggs, then you bring them back and you hatch them, and then those monsters kind of form a bond with you through the kinship stone, and then you use those in combat against other monsters. So how does the combat actually work? Well, this is a turn-based combat, and you are going to have a monster with you. You can swap the monster out anytime that you want. Uh, you, I think you can do that like once per turn, and then the monster is going to do its own thing. You can order it to do a couple of skills, but most of the time the monster just does what the monster wants. And if you do order it, it is going to use um, kinship points. Kinship points is stuff that you build up as you are doing combat against other monsters. If you are successful in the combat, the kinship uh, between you and your monstie starts raising, and then eventually you can even ride your monstie and do special kinship attacks. Uh, while you're on top of the monster, which is pretty good. Uh, the basic combat that you used to have in the original uh, Monster Stories is you would do these attacks, and after you you, you do some of the, the attacks, you raise the kinship stone. Uh, once the kinship is raised, you can ride your monster, and then after that, you keep attacking, and you can raise it three more levels until you get the kinship level three, and then you can do like a super special finish onto the monster. You can also use a level one or a level 2 kinship attack, which is not going to be as strong as a level 3, but you know, it'll still deal a significant amount of damage. So how do you do well in combat? Well, most of the combat in Monster Hunter stories is very much a rock, paper, scissors system where uh, you can do uh, three types of attacks, speed, power, and technical. And it basically is power beats technical, technical beats speed, speed beats power. And the monsters are going to do the same thing. They're going to attack you either with speed, technical, or power. And so the idea here is that you pick the right thing towards the right monster. Now, if you know monsters from Monster Hunter, you can kind of guess at what type of attacks they're going to be doing. Like you see, for instance, uh, a Bulldrome. You're going to be like, okay, Bulldrome most likely going to go for power attacks, right? Because he's not super fast, but he is you know, kind of like a beast just charges forward and deals damage. So he's going to go for power. That would be correct. If you look at something like a Kuluyaku, you might think, okay, so Kuluyaku is going to go for more technical type attacks, right? It's not that he's the smartest creature, but he's also not the fastest. He's not the most powerful. Therefore, the only thing left is technical, right? So you kind of like, you logic this stuff out and then you choose the monster that you are going to use against that monster based on that. So for instance, if you have a Bulldrome and you're fighting a Kuliaku, you know Kuliaku is technical, you know Bulldrome is powerful, you want to bring out the Bulldrome to fight against him because most of the Bulldrome's attacks are going to win versus the attacks of the Kuliaku. And then you actually control your own player character during combat and you can choose the types of attacks that you want to deal. This time around they added an additional layer to that which is you can also choose your weapon. Now you could choose your weapon in stories but from my understanding weapon didn't really have like a huge impact on how things worked out. This time around uh, different monsters and even different parts of specific monsters are going to be weak to a certain weapon type and they're going to be strong against other weapon types. So, for instance, if you play Gunlance, Gunlance is going to be the piercing type, which I believe is going to be the same as the bow. So, you're going to deal piercing damage to monsters. And certain monsters will be weak to it, other monsters won't. And then you also have the hammer or the hunting horn, which is going to be blunt weapons. And then you have the sword and shield or the great sword, which is going to be slashing weapons. You guys get the idea. So, the idea here is you do an attack on a monster. After you do one attack, uh, on the next attack that you do, it will tell you if that attack was effective or not by showing you the icon of your weapon and if the attack is no good there's going to be like a red slash on top of it indicating this is not a good weapon to fight against this monster or this part or whatever which caused me to not be able to use my gun lens as much as i wanted thanks capcom because a lot of the early monsters are actually resilient to piercing attacks so they want you to use more slashing so i used up my sword and shield uh, a lot more than the gun lance, but the few monsters that you, I did get to fight with the gun lance was very satisfying because you get to really experience the, the combat system there. Then your character also has special attacks that he can do, and this time around they changed it because if I remember correctly in the original stories, the attacks would have uh, one style associated with them. So certain sword and shield attacks would be uh, for the power type of attack, others would be for the speed type of attack. It seems that this time around, uh, your attacks all have three variants. So there's a variant for each of the special attacks you can do. There's a variant for speed, another one for power, another one for technical. And so that way you can win head-to-head -head engagements with monsters 
uh, with the proper attack. And in the case of the gun lens, it's actually very interesting because winning head-to-heads with skill attacks like shelling or wyvern stake significantly increase your kinship gauge. And good God, maximum kinsec gauge popping off of wyvern fire feels so good. That wyvern fire animation is just so brutally gorgeous. And I think it's an interesting system to actually have you swap between different weapons so that you learn how each of the weapons works. And it makes the combat, it gives you an additional layer of depth to the combat. On top of the fact that I don't remember going after specific parts in stories. But then again, like I said, I'm, I'm only like five hours in or whatever. Maybe there is a little bit of that. But in this one, it is very specific. Like you fight a Puke, you get to attack its tail. You can break its tail. If you break its tail, he's not going to be able to do as many poison attacks. It's really, really cool. And... Depending on which part of the monster you're attacking, it is going to be weak to a certain weapon, like certain parts you have to use the hammer, other parts you have to use, uh, you know, your gun lance or your bow, whatever you want, and I think that is really cool. Then there's also the sync attacks, which you already had in the original Monster Hunter stories. The way this works is, say for instance, the monster is coming at you with a power attack, and both you and your monster choose speed attacks, and you're able to basically just, you know, do a sync attack sometimes that just deals a ton of damage and completely cancels out the monster's attack that it was going to do to you. So that is really cool, those sync attacks with your buddies. Um, naturally, there's also the head-to-heads, which is whenever a monster is attacking you with a certain style, you attack with a different style. There's an animation that shows you a head-to-head -head against a monster. There was also, um, sometimes it'll just be a clash between your monster and the other monster is supposed to spam A. At least that's what we had to do in the demo, but I think it's going to change depending on a monster. As you progress through the game, you're going to have to press different buttons. But that is also really cool. And then there's also buddies. So this time around, you're going to be able to get a buddy sometimes, not always. And when you have a buddy with you, they might have their own monster. And so you can actually sync up attacks in a really cool way. Like if you're able to mount your monster at the same time as your buddy, you can both do a kinship attack at the same time and it's going to sync it up. And the first one that you get to see is completely insane because you're riding a velocidrome at that point of the story. Uh, your buddy, who is Kanya from the village, is also riding a velocidrome. And the combo attack that you do is just like a bunch of blue lasers coming out out of nowhere and then just a big ass explosion like some dragon ball type level stuff here if you just like destroying whatever monster you happen to be fighting I seem to remember the first time i did that it was like a velocipray or something and we just tactically nuked it from orbit and i was and i was this, this may be a little bit overkill just a smidge but again those animations are so gorgeous it is so well done like you can you can feel the passion that the developers have put on this game i've i had a complete blast yesterday and like i said i didn't even do that much it was eight hours and i would argue that i didn't even go after the the real min max stuff which is actually getting specific genes on certain eggs because eventually further down the line you're going to be able to exchange genes between different monsters you're basically doing some friggin dna splicing uh to make the most perfect monster imaginable or something like that and that is going to be where the real complexity and the longevity of this title are going to show up because i think there's going to be a lot of potential for you to do mid max near the end i'm pretty sure there's going to be pvp there's also going to be some co-op stuff that they're doing i can't wait like i don't know if you guys can tell but i'm super excited about this game <laughs> and i just wanted to let you guys know what i thought uh about the demo after all of that and give you guys a couple of details on what the gameplay is like if you have a switch and you still haven't tried out the demo i would heavily recommend that you would do so because even if you don't like it at least you get an idea of what the game is about but i've seen a lot of people say it's like oh this is definitely not for me i'm not even going to try it and, and seriously at the very least, if you have a Switch, like just try it. You might be surprised. And on the PC side of things, I believe there's going to be a demo on the release date of the game. So if you're still unsure if it is for you or not, then don't pre-order it. Don't do any of that stuff. Just wait for the release date and try out the demo and see what it feels like. Because remember, probably for the PC demo, you're also going to be able to import that to the final game. So you're not even wasting your time. The demo is going to be available on release. And it, like I said, I played the damn thing for eight hours. It's like, I'm pretty sure in those eight hours, you can decide if, if that's the game for you or not. But anyway, thank you all very much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit it up with a like. If you did not enjoy this video, hit it up with a dislike. Feedback is important. I'll see you guys in the next one. 
Stay strong, stay safe, peace out.